Hello, my name is Alex, and I'll be talking a little bit about Polygen, an autoregressive generative model for 3D meshes. Polygen is an autoregressive generative mesh algorithm based on transformers. It's capable of directly creating meshes from nothing unconditionally. It can also be conditioned on a given context, such as an image, class, or even voxels. Because it's an autoregressive generative model, it can complete and reconstruct sequences and is able to generate plausible and usable meshes, even under uncertain and ambiguous conditions. In games, films, or immersive VR environments, generative models can rapidly create detail on the fly and greatly improve realism and detail without excessive memory and storage requirements. Meshes can be challenging for deep learning since elements are often unordered. Face structures for polygon meshes are discrete and can contain polygons with a varying number of sides, like n-gons, which have a varying sequence length. Meshes that represent the same thing can have a different number of polygons, even for the same set of vertices, like the meshes for a bunny in the bottom right, which all have the same shape, but with very different meshes. Most existing approaches to 3D synthesis rely on recombining and deforming of template models or parametric shape families. Previous work has looked at other representations like ordered and unordered point clouds, voxels, functional representations like sign distance functions and implicit surfaces, parameterized deformable meshes. In 2017, Nash and Williams created a generative model for ordered point clouds using a variational autoencoder, while both point cloud GAN and point flow were generative models for ordered point clouds. More recently, Guo et al. use transformers for point clouds. Multiple techniques exist for voxels, but similarly to the functional representations, most require a post-processing step to create a mesh. An example of this is Mesquiter et al. in 2019, whose occupancy networks fit a mesh to a point cloud. Kulik et al. in 2018 take mesh surface patches and fit and deform them into a patchwork to create their output mesh. At the time they wrote this paper, the authors claimed that there were no existing methods that directly model mesh vertices and faces. So for comparison's sake and evaluation, we're going to focus on log likelihood, some summary statistics for similar meshes, and chamfer distance. We'll also compare against compression and look at entropy. Here we can see a brief comparison between some of those techniques, what we have with polygen on the upper left. Uh, Mesquiter on the right, you can see the post-processing fit to a mesh and that results in a modeled surface. AtlasNet, uh, which uses the patchwork, appears patchy, and implicit representations have sort of softened edges, whereas Polygen can capture sharp edges. Here we directly model and generate meshes that are similar to those created by people. We take a principled approach to create probabilistic models yielding diverse output, which are robust to ambiguous input. Uh, vertex models like Point Grow used a bespoke handcrafted attention mechanism and an autoregressive decomposition similar to Polygen to model 3D point clouds. However, they operated on fixed length point clouds, whereas Polygen is able to handle vertex sequences of variable length. So the contributions uh, of this paper are is that it is the first unconditional mesh vertex and face model that can create Engon meshes directly with no post-processing. It's also autoregressive, um, so it can estimate joint distributions over mesh vertices and face faces. It has also demonstrated conditional generation for object class, images, and voxels. And it's a novel application of transformers to meshes and exploits the permutation invariance and the long range of transformers. Because it's probabilistic, output is diverse, realistic, and directly usable in graphics applications, unlike previous post-processed output. A problem setting is probabilistic, where we express a distribution over meshes M as a distribution of vertices V and polygonal faces F. Using the chain rule, we can decompose this into two parts, the joint distribution of probability over vertices and probability over the faces given the vertices. When we model things this way, we can perform inference, prediction, data completion, and data generation. For faces, we can have either triangles made up of three vertices or generalized n-gons with a variable number of vertices. We model the joint distribution of flattened vertices as the product of a series of conditional vertex distributions. At each step, we produce the parameters of a predictive distribution using the previous sequence output. A model is trained using log probability of the observed data with respect to model parameters theta. This is the same formulation for both vertices and faces, but with faces, we also need the vertices as well as the previous faces generated. To implement this probabilistic approach, we take our decomposition and create two stack transformer blocks, one for the vertices and one for the faces. 
The vertices are handled using a masked transformer decoder transformer block. The face model transformer uses a pointer network based transformer. Both estimate distributions of vertices and faces respectively. A prediction mask based on simple rules like only allowing ascending vertices in the Z direction is added at the end to prevent any invalid meshes from being output by the architecture. Overall, the model is trained to maximize the log probability of the observed data with respect to the model parameters. Before training, we take the vertices of our mesh, sort by Z, then Y, then X, and create flattened tuples with a stopping token at the end. We scale and orient the meshes into a unit bounding box along the primary longest direction and quantize that to eight bits, which also collapses overlapping vertices and provides bounded input that we can treat as logits. The generation vertices occurs from the bottom up in the Z direction, either conditionally or unconditionally. The transformer creates three learned embeddings for each input token, a type, that is if it's a vertex or a stopping token, a quantized value coordinate for each vertex component, and a positional encoding for the sequence in the sorted mesh. The face model generates faces from sequences of vertices and the previous series of faces fed into the model. To deal with variable length sequences, we generate pointer embeddings using an autoregressive network after each vertex embedding step, as in mesh pointer networks. Vertex sequences are then dotted with the pointer embeddings and run through a softmax. At this point, new face and stopping tokens are also added for each new face, resulting in a usable distribution over an arbitrary number of elements. For the face model, the token's position is decomposed into the index of the face it belongs to, as well as the location of a token within a face and is learned separately. Here, our face model operates on faces to create a flattened set of vertex indices, which are combined with the associated embeddings from the encoder and the vertex transformer through gather operation. These are fed into the face transformer encoders to create the learned embeddings. The index embeddings are processed with a mask transform decoder to output distributions over vertex indices at each step, as well as over the next face tokens and the stopping tokens. The final layer in the transformer decoder outputs pointer embeddings, which are compared to the vertex embeddings using a dot product to produce the desired distributions. After training, here are the results. Based on the class conditional, Polygen emits plausible clean and sharp meshes for this chair and dresser, showing clear, well-defined regions with appropriate symmetry and proportions. Similarly, given an image conditional, the image is on the left, Polygen generates the meshes for lamps, desks, and even baskets with double curvature. The yellow meshes in the middle show variations produced, while the blue meshes on the right represent ground truth. The situation is similar with voxels, and despite errors and gaps due to quantization collapsing, smooth meshes can still be output. Looking at the experimental results, we measure the modeling performance of unconditional models trained on ShapeNet and baseline methods. For predicting vertices, we achieve a prediction rate of 85% and up to 90% prediction for faces. Typically for generative models, we also look at the negative log likelihood reported in bits per vertex and averaged across all test samples. Here we can see that Polygen has significantly better performance than uniform distribution and is also more efficient than a compression method like Draco. In general, finding the appropriate metrics for Polygen was a challenge, as most metrics do not capture the fidelity or plausibility of an Angon mesh. Qualitatively, we can see the results in the image in the bottom, which correspond to the output of the best trained model. Symmetric chamfer distance can be used to evaluate the reconstruction of a predicted versus target point clouds which are generated by sampling points from meshes from our ShapeNet set. Due to the probabilistic nature of polygen, with few predictions, chamfer distance is high. This is expected as we aren't trying to exactly reproduce the target mesh, but learn a mesh like the target mesh. In contrast, AtlasNet optimizes the evaluation metric specifically, whereas polygen does not. When allowed to generate 10 samples or more, we can get a very good reconstruction, slightly better chamfer distance than AtlasNet. Looking at the overall statistics, the distribution of vertices, faces, number of mesh components, edge length, face area, and the connectivity or degree of vertices, we find that we have very similar overall distributions, especially when taking the nucleus of the sample rate at 90%. Some current limitations of this approach are that transformers can be expensive to train. Tension traditionally has been quadratic in nature, However, there are new mechanisms which make it L log L. We believe that there can be limits in mesh sizes. Uh, there could be problems with the scalability of the vertex history. And we don't really know what the limits are in the paper. 
for the code at this point. Quantization can hide some of that detail, and we need better quality metrics for understanding statistical variations. Unclear is how polygen performs with generalized curvature, such as organic objects like cows and horses and things on the right. There were some examples of doubly curved surfaces, but not very many organic shapes. In summary, we have seen an unconditional autoregressive generative mesh model based on transformers for n-gon polygonal meshes. Conditions based on class, image, and voxels have been shown, yielding a diverse, realistic set of meshes similar to human-generated meshes and usable in games, graphics, and other tasks.